Let us pray for inspiration. Holy Spirit, you fill our hearts. Kindle in them the fire of your love and fill our minds with the light of your wisdom. Amen. Most of us remember at least one devoted teacher in our lives, right? At least one. Someone who taught us much more than math or history or science or phonics. Someone who cared for us. Someone who believed in us. Someone who taught us to believe in ourselves. Someone who taught us to develop our full potential as human beings for our own sake and for the sake of the whole world. When I think of such teachers in my life, three, not just one, but three come to my mind right away. Seventh grade, Sister Catherine. My sister's here. She remembers Sister Catherine. Sister Catherine believed in me enough to let me write and cast and direct a class play. (laughs) She could see through the insomnia I had told her about. In the seventh grade, I had insomnia for three months. She could see through that. She could see my insecurities and my anxieties, and she wanted to give me an opportunity to shine. And so I did. I shined. And I even fired the class princess who had the the leading role in the play (laughs) because she was late for rehearsal several times. (laughs) Sister Catherine was glad because the girl who took her place really needed a chance to shine. And she did shine. In high school, Coach Anna King taught me biology, P.E., he was also the cross-country coach. And he noticed, I think, in P.E., my lack of confidence about my athletic ability. Maybe it's because during dodgeball, I'd close my eyes. (laughs) (laughs) And he invited me to be on the cross-country team. And I trusted him. I trusted him. So I joined the cross-country team, and I became a very good runner. I became the captain of the cross-country team eventually. More importantly, I, I became at ease with students who were athletes, who were known as being the athletes. And I invited other students who were non-athletes to be part of the cross-country team too. In graduate school, Dr. Susan Handelman was on my dissertation committee. She had to read my dissertation as it unfolded. And in a time of my life of tremendous transition, tremendous upheaval, Susan spent more time talking to me about that than about the actual topic of my dissertation, which was Dickens, a riveting topic for anybody. (laughs) And in her support for me, she modeled for me the kind of caring that I wanted and would try to show to my students over the next 20 years in my academic career. And of course, all of the devoted teachers I ever had reminded me during my teaching career that I was called, above all, not to be devoted to my subject matter, but to be devoted to my students. I wasn't always good at it. I failed at it often, but I I knew that's what I was called to do. And through my devotion to them, they could learn to be devoted to others. That kind of devotion helps us to understand today's Very, very tender scene from the Gospel of John. Very tender scene of Jesus the teacher and his students. They're sharing the last supper that they would share before he died. We we heard in this reading today that his betrayer Judas has just left the room to arrange with authorities his arrest later on that night. And so this is the very last opportunity that Jesus has to be with his students whom he tenderly calls little children. 
It's the very last opportunity he has to remind them of what he taught them, which was not religious doctrines. He taught them how to love one another as he loved them. And he told them when he's gone, people would know what school they came from, his school, by their love for one another. And like all very good teachers, just before the scene today, Jesus gives his students an object lesson and what it means to love one another. You might remember that lesson that he gave his students. He took off his robe, put a towel around his waist, got down on his hands and knees, and washed their feet. And then he said to them, you call me a teacher, and you're right, I am a teacher. What I'm teaching you is this teaching you what love is. And I think what Jesus is saying to a community of faith, his community of faith, our community of faith, that this kind of love means setting aside personal pride, setting aside self-importance, setting aside personal preferences. I think it means things like, as our young people were saying, sitting next to somebody at a potluck, somebody you don't like, I think it means not insisting on your own point of view in a meeting or in a decision-making process. I think it means sharing. I think it means not gossiping about others out of the parking lot. And it also means forgiving those who gossip about you in the parking lot. Hmm. In teaching his disciples what love means... Jesus was also teaching them how to reveal God to the world because God is love. And it's through acts of love that we reveal God. That's how the world knows that. And such acts of love give glory to God, Jesus says in today's passage. Glory to God because we're revealing God and that's exactly what we're called to do in life we're called to give glory to God by revealing this kind of love like all Christian communities this community of faith is called to teach the world about God's love every single person in this room every single person in this room is called to be a teacher Hmm. Now, if that meant teaching theological, religious doctrines, I think a lot of us would feel pretty uncomfortable about our calling. A lot of us would say, well, I'm no theologian. I can't explain all the intricacies of Scripture and this passage of the Bible and this passage of the Bible. I can't explain the doctrine of the Trinity or the doctrine of the Incarnation. Well, good news, you don't have to. That's not what Jesus called us to teach. He called us to teach how to love as he loved. How to love. That's a lot simpler than a subject matter like math or history or science or theology. It's a lot simpler, but it's also a lot more difficult because the only way, the only way we can teach how to love is by loving And that requires us to change from the inside out. Change our emphasis on our self-importance, our personal preferences, our judgments of one another, our impatience, our resistance to forgiving, our resistance to sharing, all those things that requires us to change loving. As the writer and ex-nun, Karen Armstrong, says about her own very difficult spiritual journey in life. She says religion is not about believing, having to believe, having to accept certain very difficult propositions. Religion is about doing things that change you. And Armstrong realized this profoundly when she was writing a book. It wasn't a book about Christianity. It happened to be a book about Islam. She learned 
that Muslims were required to do religious practices that were supposed to change them from the inside out. For example, like stretching out on the floor several times a day in the direction of Mecca as a way to open themselves, let go of their self-will, open themselves to God. They were required to give alms to those who were poor, those who were vulnerable, in order to cultivate God's kind of generous spirit in them, or to let God cultivate that spirit within them. So according to Armstrong, this is not a belief system, it's a process, a process. Religion kind of makes them do things meant to change them forever. And of course, Christianity has all of its own kinds of spiritual practices that lead us to spiritual transformation, let God change us. Very similar things to the things of Islam, of course, sharing our money, of course. And as Christians, we come together, we pray together, we worship together, we serve the world together, and we support one another in fellowship come together in fellowship, all these ways of teaching each other, reminding each other what it means to love one another the way that Jesus loved. And and thereby revealing to the world what God's love is like. Because God is love. I think the world needs to know, desperately needs to know that this is what Christianity about is about. Christianity is not about having all the right beliefs. It's about loving in this way. And as Christianity becomes less and less credible in our world, because we Christians have traditionally emphasized having all the right beliefs rather than loving one another, Because of that, so much depends on us to accept our calling as teachers, devoted teachers like our devoted teachers were, whose focus wasn't so much the subject matter as loving us. That's what we need to focus on. There's a story in Isaac Dennison's book, Out of Africa. You know, that, that maybe you've seen the movie Out of Africa. Isaac Dennison is a kind of a male name, but the writer was a woman. She assumed a male name. And it's a story about a boy named Kitao. Kitao was employed as a domestic servant by the author, and he did a great job. But after about three months, Kitao asked his employer, the author, to write him a letter of recommendation for a Muslim man. He wanted to go work for him. And... His employer was upset because he'd done such a great job. She wanted to keep him, so she offered him a raise. He wasn't interested in more money. He had decided he was either going to become a Christian or a Muslim. And he had lived with a Christian to see how a Christian lives. And now he wanted to go live with a Muslim to see how a Muslim lives. And Denison says in her book, I wished he told me that before he came to live with me. (laughs) But the truth is, the truth is that everyone who comes through those doors in this sanctuary cares much less about the particular doctrines that we believe than whether they are going to know God's love in this place. And everyone out there in that world out there cares less and less about religious doctrines that divide people, whether they're the religious doctrines of Christianity or Islam or any other religion. And they care more and more about what what will bring people together. That's what Jesus cared about. What? will bring people together. That's what he taught with his very life. Giving of his life each day, finally giving his life away. And that's, that's what we're called to teach. Through self-giving, the giving of our lives. We're, we're called to be teachers. You're not going to get out of this. 
We're all called to be teachers. Through our love, our love for one another in this place, that teaches us how to love the way that Jesus loved so we can bring that kind of love to the world and give glory to God. So congratulations, teachers. Your work is cut out for you. Amen.